Hello students, welcome to this program titled Relationship between Creativity and Intelligence. The objectives set for the present session are to understand divergent thinking, to understand convergent thinking, to know the relationship between intelligence and creativity, to highlight the psychological consensus about intelligence and creativity. Laymen are often confused with the psychological intangible concepts like happiness, love, creativity, intelligence, etc. Most of us have a general concept of what intelligence is, similar to the love, happiness, etc. Our personal definition is influenced by our own understanding of these intangible concepts. We tend to define intelligence in many ways, like the capacity to learn, the faculty of understanding, and aptitude in grasping tasks, gender knowledge and wisdom, the ability to reason, mental ability, and quick cognitive response. Creativity is another term influenced by our own viewpoint of the world and is open to personal interpretation. However, the term itself is usually described as one's ability to think of original ideas and concepts. Both intelligence and creativity are mental abilities. It's a long process to get detailed knowledge about these terms. But the basic difference between two is that intelligence is a general capacity or ability of an individual, whereas Creativity requires different thinking. Intelligence is influenced by our own understanding of the concept. Intelligence is what one can improve by his studies, reasoning, understanding and learning. It's most widely studied in humans, but it is also used for animals and plants. Plants, though they are not human beings, they understand everything. Intelligence derived from Latin word intelligera means to pick up. As a basic term, intelligence is a high capacity to learn or understanding a particular term. On the other hand, creativity is derived from Latin word creo, which means to make, to create. Creativity is a phenomena where one tries to create something new or valuable. It is the ability to cause, to exist, or to create something of subjective value. In creativity, intelligence plays a very important role. One can't create anything if he is not perceived to associate with intelligence. It's the process of producing something original and worthwhile. According to J.P. Guilford, a renowned psychologist, creativity involves divergent thinking with respect to the traits of fluency, flexibility and originality of thought process. It means that creativity involves the thinking process in various forms with the originality and flexibility in the thought process. Creativity is a daily thought which a person one day explores and produces. Intelligence certainly plays a part in creative thinking, so intelligence matters. It demonstrates the ability to gather information, knowledge and effectively use it. Creativity is the ability to go beyond the intelligence frame and to capitalize on seeing random connections of concepts. People are usually confused with the concept like creativity and intelligence and use them interchangeably. In distinguishing creative thought from non-creative thought, different authors, educationists and psychologists put forth different points. According to S. A. Midmick, creativity is the forming of associative elements into new combinations which either meet specified requirements or are in some way useful. According to E.P. Torrance, 
Creativity is defined as a process of becoming sensitive to problems, deficiencies, gaps in knowledge, missing elements and disharmonies. Creativity involves divergent production. Divergence means to tend from a common point in different directions. Process of generating multiple solutions to a problem. The process of thinking in different directions. Seek out variety from known and remembered information. Its ability to produce a large variety of responses. Its searching and scanning of one's memory store. Process or ability to generate different logical alternatives. Process to generate information from given information where information is based upon variety and quality of output from the same source. Divergent thinking excels in lively imagination or unusual bizarre ideas. Creative thought is innovative, exploratory, venturesome, uncertainty for future. Divergent thinking ability involves fluency, flexibility, originality, elaboration. Now fluency means the ability to come up with a large number of ideas or solutions or concepts or words in response to a given stimuli. And flexibility means the ability to come up with a variety of ideas or solutions or techniques. Originality means the ability to come up with useful ideas or solutions that others have not thought of sensitivity to unusual issues, feelings, anomalies or problems. Elaboration means the ability to identify the causes of situation as well as likely consequences of situation, redefine problems, explain problems. Divergent thinking is a healthy departure from the beaten track, stimulates questioning frame of mind and discourages blind acceptance. Divergent thinking is major using Torrent's test of creativity. This consists of both verbal and figural parts. Divergent thinking is also measured by Guilford's alternate uses task in which one has to come up with as many uses as possible for a common household item. These creativity test results are scored keeping in mind a number of different creativity criteria. The most common criteria are first, fluency, which captures the ability to come up with many diverse ideas quickly. This is measured by the total number of ideas generated. Second, flexibility, which captures the ability to cross boundaries and make remote associations. This is measured by number of different categories of ideas generated. Originality, which means how statistically different or novel the ideas are compared to a comparison group and is measured as number of novel ideas. Fourth, elaboration, which measure the amount of detail associated with the idea. This is not relevant to creativity, but elaboration has more to do with focusing on each solution, idea and developing it further, perhaps a responsibility more in alignment with that of intelligence. Now we will discuss what intelligence is from the point of view of different psychologists, educationists or theorists. According to David Bachelor, intelligence is the aggregate or global capacity of an individual to act purposefully, to think rationally and to deal effectively with his environment. According to Stoddard, intelligence is the ability to undertake activities that are difficult complex and abstract and which are adaptive to a goal and are done quickly and which have social value and which lead to the creation of something different. Intelligence involves convergent thinking. Convergence means to tend towards 
or to meet in one point or value. Process of producing correct answer. It's the process of producing conventional answers from known and remembered information. It's the process of deducing a single solution to a problem. Generation of information from given information where the emphasis is upon achieving conventionally accepted best outcomes. Convergent thinking is characterized by rigidity, conformity and unquestioning acceptance of authority. Now convergent thinking is measured using Binet and Simon test of intelligence. It consists of verbal parts. Convergent thinking is also measured by Wechsler's intelligence scale. Intelligence is usually associated with the ability to effectively think both logically and abstractly and process, store and articulate large amount of knowledge and information. But it is proving to be much broader than we think. The intelligence test results are scored keeping in mind a number of different intelligence criteria. The most common are first memory. It involves learning that sticks the ability to recall and retrieve. Second, convergent production, the ability to generate logic tight conclusions. Third, evaluation, it's the ability of judging goodness of what is produced. Fourth, inductive reasoning, the ability which is usually dealt with in logic while examining a series of facts of data to find out a general principle running through them. Fifth, detective reasoning, the ability that is commonly dealt with in logic. This deals with one's ability to apply a given gender principle to a particular situation. This form of reasoning is called syllogism. Sixth, comprehension. It involves the ability to grasp, understand and to react to a given situation. Seventh, information. It's the ability to have the knowledge about the things around. Eighth, association. It is the ability to point out similarities or dissimilarities between two or more concepts or objects. Now we'll discuss relationship between creativity and intelligence. Are all intelligent people creative? Is it possible to identify people who are highly creative but not so highly intelligent? What are the characteristics of intelligent behavior and how does it differ from or relate to creative behavior? These questions are for debate. Now studies attempted to trace the relationship between creativity and intelligence, but no exact relationship has been put forth. In recent years, attempts have been made to find out relationship between creativity and many other variables, including intelligence. Among the studies in the relationship between creativity and intelligence, diversified results have been reported. The most widely known research study in this area is that of Getzel and Jackson, 1962. They took the sample of 192 boys and 241 girls of high school. Five creativity majors like word association, uses of things, hidden shapes, fables and makeup problem and a standard IQ test were administered on the sample. The results showed that all the five creativity majors correlated significantly with IQ for boys, while as four of the five creativity majors correlated significantly with IQ in case of the girls. Now, the important thing is to consider the relationship among the creativity tests, that is, the question of whether they define a unitary dimension of individual differences. The results showed that the five creativity tasks are virtually no more strongly correlated among themselves 
then they are correlated with intelligence and that this is also true for both sexes. The average correlation are 0.26 and 0.27 in case of boys and girls respectively between the creativity and intelligence and 0.28 and 0.32 for boys and girls respectively among creativity majors themselves. In some the creativity majors correlated with intelligence on the order of 0.3 and also correlated with each other on the same very order. Thus, there is no strong evidence that would suggest that the creativity tests are any more strongly related to one another than they are related to general intelligence. In other words, it cannot be said that creativity as a psychological dimension is distinct from intelligence. As the tests of creativity share the same with one another, they share with intelligence. Now we will see the research studies that reflect no relationship. In this regard, Valich and Kohgam in 1965 may be credited for having demonstrated the distinction between creativity and intelligence. They successfully proved that creativity can be distinguished from intelligence both conceptually and in terms of measurement of assessment. On a sample of 7th and 11th grade students using creativity tests patterned after Guilford and Wallach's test, J. Ravens Progressive Matrix, here 1971, reported that creativity showed zero correlation with intelligence. High achievers on intelligence as reported Rawat and Agarwal 1977 were not always high achievers on creativity and vice versa. It can be inferred that individuals who are intelligent may not be creative thinkers and highly creative thinkers need not to be very intelligent. Now we'll see the psychological consensus on relationship between creativity and intelligence. Psychology seems to have consensus on the minimum level of intelligence needed in order to be creative. Level of minimum intelligence differ in different fields. Minimum ability level is called threshold level ability. Razik in 1967 points out that some types of creative talent may be found all along the normal IQ range, even in children in the below average group. Man has devised a number of instruments to try and test for intelligence. Most notable is the IQ test. Creativity has proven to be a little harder to test, so there are fewer scientific testing instruments but they still exist. Torrance estimated that we miss 70% of total creative youth when we depend solely on IQ tests to measure ability. Around the 1950s, scientists began trying to find a link between creativity and intelligence. All the published correlations between the two concepts were low enough to justify treating intelligence and creativity as a distinct cognitive attributes. This is all related to our today's topic that's relationship between creativity and intelligence. Hope you enjoyed and understood. Thank you for watching.